again. Welcome back to part three of the roundup of our short breaks in the UK this last year. Um, I'm going to take you through Hereford now and we were there for a few days, um, Tracy and Sarah and I, and we were so lucky with the weather. After a week of torrential rain, the sun shone and although we had to squelch in the campsite field, which was pretty grim, we had a couple of lovely days out and we enjoyed the beauty that is all around Simmons Yat. It's absolutely gorgeous. Rosie was super brave, walked all the way across the bouncing wobbly rope bridge. And then we walked the full sculpture trail. It was about three hours long. And uh, yeah, it was a long way. <laughs> um, but we were rewarded with some really cool art installations, including um, a track with some carved sleepers and a huge suspended stained glass window. And finally, we walked out to the viewpoint to look down on the amazing views from Simmons Yacht. Tracy and I will definitely be returning to kayak there in the future, so watch this space. I'm in a bush. <laughs> Just paddling, I think, somewhere mm. through Leighton Buzzard. Um, <coughs> I'm not entirely sure whereabouts, but we've just gone past the Globe Pub mm. and we're paddling towards Grove Lock. Mm. Whether we'll actually go all the way to Grove Lock, who knows? It's kind of noisy here. There are cars on the towpath and things, which is all a bit strange. Anyway, here we are. What a lovely way to spend a bank holiday Monday, away from all the crowds. 
and a bit of stitching and a picnic out with my friend and her dog. They were quite a way away actually. If I spin, if I spin, I can see where they are. There they are. <laughs> Paddling away. Well done. <laughs> I bet that's woken you up. So after that lovely relaxing paddling and a little bit of slow stitching, um, I'm going to do a little bit of extreme stitching now. So I joined my daughter and her partner at Santa Pod for a day of drag racing. And um, I was off home. It had been a smashing day. Weather was fab. We'd had a lovely time. They were about to have a barbecue. I was going home. And when we got back to the tent, it had been vandalised, which is completely unheard of there. Um, we were absolutely horrified. I don't know. Nobody knew why, but the tent was collapsed and it looked like it was a bit doomed. Um, anyway, we reported it to the um, security people and the lady said, can you put the tent back up? So Lauren looked at the tags and said, no, because all the tags, the tags been ripped off. We can't put the pole back in it. So there was a bit of head scratching and um, and I <laughs> I piped up. Actually, it's fine. I've um, I've got a sewing machine in the car. So that's what I did. I we set the sewing machine up and I fixed the tent. Have a look. So I've stitched in many strange places in my life, but 10 o'clock in the evening in the dark at Santa Pod Raceway, um, following a, an incident with my daughter's tent is one of the firsts, um, I think for me. So somebody very kindly dismantled their tent during the day, we don't know who, and decided to rip off the tags that hold the um, these little guys here that you put the poles on so we're actually at the moment waiting for some power to happen but um, it was quite amusing when the poor security lady said oh um, have you got any means to fix it and I said weirdly enough I have a sewing machine in my car <laughs> which <laughs> made her really laugh um, because I do have a sewing machine in my car always and uh, so this isn't slow stitching this is mending in a crisis but at the moment we have no power so we're still waiting for the power to come on they're doing something weird to my car now god help them if it doesn't work when I want to go home but um but anyway we will we will see we're just going to be patient and wait but we've had a lovely day um we love drag racing my daughter and her partner crew for a jet bus and i've been coming here for a long time and um it was a really really good day sun shone we all got burned and um and we were going to sit and have a barbecue and then i was going home and they were going to have their dinner and um and now I haven't gone home yet because I'm here. <laughs> Where's my pedal? Okay, I'm going to have to do this kind of weirdly by hand. So, <laughs> this is a first. So, hands free. So, I'm doing a classic um, cross piece. It's kind of trying to bend my needle, which is taking out. So, oh, I'm going to So I'm coming down. We're okay. filming. We're just filming. Um, and then I'm going to go across. And this is how you do a nice big strengthened thing. I have never stitched. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the funniest, funniest thing. I have to say, this is probably one of the weirdest experiences I've had. I have, uh, you know, what can I say? But anyway. <laughs> Welcome to my world of weird stuff that happens at the weekend. <laughs> and if you thought our camping trips were weird, this just tops it all. Okay, I just fixed the tent in a field. <laughs> I have literally just fixed the tent in. A, oh, I don't think this one's got a cutter. Right, show me your. So uh... there we go. <laughs> it's nice and strong. It should hold. It should be all right. <laughs> This will be added into one of my videos. taken the opportunity to disappear for a weekend and we've come down to uh, North Walsham in Norfolk which we've not done camping at um, this well for a few years actually Norfolk so I haven't bought sewing with me this time I've bought crochet so I thought I'd um, do a little bit more work on a blanket that I'm making which is this and I'm using a wool that's got lots of lovely color mixes so it's um, purples and teal and light colours and then it's got greys within it and then in there I'm mixing um, this lovely one so um, they go together really really nicely and they've made quite a nice mix it's sort of got a stripe to it but I really like it so I've brought that with me today and, um, and I thought I'd just sit and do a little bit of this we're packing up soon. We've had a really lovely time. It's been amazing. The weather's been completely different to what we expected. It forecast us rain and showers and it wasn't really going to be that warm. And actually, <laughs> as you can see, it's amazing. It's been sunny and gorgeous. And yesterday, well, we got here on Thursday night. Um, Friday, we had a really lovely day walking around Sheringham and um, yesterday we had a kind of a chilled day and then we went to Backton which I've never been to before so let me just work some of this out so it's just a trick to keeping the um, tension okay is that you don't have a tight ball of wool so my wool is everything sitting in a bag this is my bag here actually I put the front on this it was a plain bag and this is silk embroidered silk and I stitched it on because I didn't like the front of the bag um, so my wool sort of sits in that and and I'm just doing a very very plain stitch on this so um, I'll explain it in a minute um, and yeah we went to Backton yesterday which I've never been to it's really lovely it's got a lovely long beach and a really nice fish and chip shop although we had to queue for ever um, but it was worth it really nice and good veggie options as well so highly recommended um, and today we had a very lazy morning um, and um, we decided to go to the Shire Horse Centre at West Runton which is hillside and it's got everything there they rescue all sorts so it's lots of it's pigs and sheep and goats and alpacas and chickens and budgies and bunnies um, 
and obviously horses and donkeys. There's some beautiful Shire horses there, which my daughter really fell in love with. Um, and she's come with us this weekend, which is lovely, because it does normally. So I'm stitching with a really um, simple stitch. So it's just when you go through a, a, a double loop here and you pick up your wool and then you bring it back through and then you bring it back through here. But the, the, the key is to go through both. So you've got two loops here. You've got two bits of wool and you go through both and you bring that wool, you hook that wool over, bring it back through, make two loops and then you bring it back through those two loops. And the real big trick of crocheting is to keep your fingers or your hands really loose. So if you try and pinch, you end up with a very, very tight knot. And this is basically crochet is just knotting, but with a stick. So when I was little, my nan was absolutely determined to teach me to knit. She was a brilliant knitter. And I was absolutely useless. And I used to go and stay with her every other weekend. She lived in Kent. Um, and she would start me off and I would come home and then I would drop stitches and I would make a gigantic mess. And then I would go back the following fortnight and I'd go, oh, Nan. And she'd go, oh dear, and patience of a saint. She'd unknit it and knit it back up again and then she'd get me going again and off I'd go and then I'd take it home. <laughs> sure as eggs is eggs, I'd make a massive mess of it, take it back again and in the end, she said, let's try you with one. And <laughs> she gave me a crochet hook and said, see what you can do with that. And that was it, I just ran away with it. So when my daughter was little, instead of knitting her sweaters, I used to crochet her all her sweaters and I can crochet and make it look like knitting. And, um, and it made life so much easier. So I just crocheted everything. So I don't do, I'm not very good at um, reading um, patterns. I get, I think it's being impatient to be fair. I know how to read them, but I just can't be bothered. So I tend to make them up as I go along. I make stitches up as I go along as well, so sometimes I don't always adhere to the stitches, so you will occasionally see me doing something very random. This this is a blanket actually making from my room. So this is for nobody else but me, and there you go. So I'm doing wide and narrow bands of um, teal. So there's a narrow band there, there's a wide band here. And in between that, the wool that's on the, the multiple roll, is creating these bands of sort of amethyst colours and grey and white but um, it's a really nice campsite meadow view it's called and we're definitely going to come back and use it at some other time it's lovely and quiet and as you can see oh you can't probably see I don't know let me just move that slightly can you see how flat it is behind it's really really flat behind and last night we had the we had a harvest moon and it was enormous, great big orange ball in the sky, proper harvest moon, beautiful. But um, anyway, that's our little weekend away. If, actually, if I turn you that way, there you go, you can see the other side. It's really lovely, really pretty. So... Um, that's it for today. I'm not going to do very much. It's just a quick one. Um, we're going to pack up soon and head home. Tell me what you like to do, whether you're a knitter or a crocheter and what kind of things you like to crochet. And, um, and anything, you know, if I can give you some tips and hints and what have you, let me know. So uh, take care, everyone. Bye.
uh, Northumberland. I love it up there. And it's wild and it was woolly and oh, it really was wild and woolly. We headed up there for a few days. Um, Tracy's never been before and I loved it. So I've been singing its praises <laughs> and how beautiful it is. And oh, it rained. It rained and it was windy and we were so low down in the cloud that there wasn't really a view. But we really had fun. It was such a mad weekend. The mud was epic. We were sharing a field with ducks um, and they were right at home. So we had a night in the peaks on the way up. The tent got soaked. We put a tarpaulin over the tent when we got to Northumberland. We were staying in Hexham, near Hexham. And um, and we went to Annick and we wanted to go to Barter Books, which if you've never been, please go. It's an experience in itself. It's in the old station building. Um, and then finally the rain stopped and we managed to get a lovely day out on the Holy Island at Lindisfarne. Um, it's an incredible place. The atmosphere is in, is amazing. And the dogs got to run about, which they, they hadn't been able to because we'd basically been in the car. Um, and I got to go and have a wander around Gertrude Jekyll's garden, which is always a treat. Um, she's one of my, my inspiration gardeners. And it's always beautiful and wild there. And then finally, I had a go at trying to get a really decent photograph of Rosie sitting in front of the the castle. Hmm. Rosie really doesn't like having her photograph taken. But I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. Hey, you. Hey, good girl. Yes, you are. So... I hope you enjoyed that and um, had some fun with it along the way. We did. We had a lovely time. It was croak crazy. We've done a lot of miles this year. My podcast 20 years old and she's she's still coping. <laughs> so, and hopefully if everything goes to plan, she'll be going to um, Scotland in March. But uh, anyway, Rosie and I would like to wish... Stop licking the chair. <laughs> I know. Rosie and I would absolutely love to wish you all a very, very happy new year. Um, I hope that you have peace. I hope you have love. I hope you have fun. And let's hope that 2024 is a better year globally. I try and focus on doing the best I can do in the circumstances that I'm in and look after the people that I can look after. Make a difference to the people I can make a difference to. Sorry, I've got a dog hair. <laughs> and I think that if we're all kind to the people around us, it radiates out and I think everyone needs a little bit of kindness right now. I think the whole world needs kindness right now. I think there's a lot of a lot of things that need to be healed. So I wish you love. I wish you peace. And Rosie and I wish you a very, very merry, um, merry Christmas. And <laughs> you want to say something? <laughs> and um, and a, and a lovely new year. Take care, everyone. And thank you so much for being part of my life and our world. Lots of love to all of you. Happy 2024.